Adelaide. Day one. <laughs> um, okay. Hey, baby, you're, you're in charge of watching out for me straying onto the wrong side of the road. I guess you go this way. Dear Lord, your hand of protection as we move into English side. Aussie rules driving. Oh, yeah, well, this way. Here we go. Been a while. Seatbelt. Seatbelt. Definitely. Right now I'm praying like it's an all night prayer meeting. <laughs> what kind of is seeing we haven't slept for about 24 hours? <laughs> What did it take to get here today? What have you? Well, there? we left Nashville, Tennessee, um, about uh, 24 hours. No, more than that now. 24, 25 hours ago. So we got on a plane, flew to Los Angeles. Los Angeles, it's about uh, from Los Angeles to Sydney is about was about 14 and a half hours. And then um, once we got through customs, they let me back in the country I was born in, and uh, we. Got on a plane and flew about an hour and a half, two hours to Adelaide, which is down south, southern Australia. This is it. We're heading further south now. We're heading away from the city of Adelaide to an area. Um, we're actually heading to an area called Moana. That beep beeps every time I go over 100. What's the matter with it? So this whole area we, we were saying is a lot like sort of Monterey, you know, Monterey, California. 30 or 40 years ago, you know, it's got that vibe where it's not a lot of crime and so but, but, um, growing up when, when we get to Queensland and where you see where Duncan is, where I ended up moving and meeting Duncan, that's, um, you know, when we grew up there, it wasn't that long ago, you could just leave your keys in your car, go into a shopping centre, you know, no one really stole anything. There's a postie. <laughs> yeah. There's a, that is your, that's your Aussie postie right there. This is a postman. Posty means uh -huh. postman. Yeah, postman. And there's the mailman. That is the way they have looked <laughs> and since I can remember. Now up here is a church. It's quite good too. Up here is a church. It was a church my father. This is the church that I learned to play drums in. At eight or nine I started playing the drums, but at ten years old my father bought me a drum kit off of a guy that went to this church. Mm -hmm. And that auto electrical's been there, but that was the church that I, right in there, in that back right corner, about the third window in is where my drum kit sat. And what I used to do was I'd go to, um, you know, we'd go to the Sunday morning service and I'd play drums as a 10 year old. And then I would stay in that building all day. I would stay there until the 6.30 at night to the night service and wait till everybody came back. And I would just, I'd be in there by myself just playing the drums. So that's kind of where I got one of my first starts, right in that building. And nothing's changed about it really. This is your town? Uh, one of them? Kind of, yeah. I used to, uh, there's a road we get up on here that I'll show you. I used to skateboard. Uh, that's skateboarding. When I, you know, I don't want to give away my age, but skateboarding was not really about doing tricks when I was here. transportation. And uh, so these roads you see here, this was all, see, this is a great, just a nice downhill slope. Awesome. But, uh, you know, just sort of getting around from A to B. A lot of these places. You know, you could just skate, ride your skateboard everywhere. And this was a, the main area that I surfed and swam. See this reef and this jetty? This is it. We'll get a better look at it soon as we get further down. But this whole area here, this is um, Port Nolunga and Seaford. That's what I used to do. Exactly what that guy's doing. Just used to teach kids to snorkel, to swim. This, all these groups see out there at the pier. And way out there, there's that red boat. Mm-hmm. I used to drive that round and, and uh, they'd be dropping off divers to go out and dive off that reef. It's a great reef to dive off. These are the sand dunes I used to play in as a kid. So my grandfather was a big part of my growing up. You know, this house that we're going to was the house that, you know, I kind of spent a lot of time as a kid, you know. And nothing's changed about it, so it's kind of cool. It's my grandma's house. 
stayed in that caravan quite a few times. There's my brother Mark. And we have arrived. I'll stay back a little bit. Yep. We made it. Good. 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 That's an Aussie lunch meal right there. Yeah. Corn beef. This so was this was one of my favourite foods growing up. Ah, yeah. Rice salad. Mum's rice salad. There it is, right there. It's cold. What's in there? Vinegar and stuff in it. Vinegar was a lot of bell. Knowing that Peter was coming, did you prepare a little something like uh, his favourite something or other? Yes, I did. This is his favourite. Uh -huh. Rice salad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Me so, please. So he tells us. <laughs> and watermelon. We always have to have a supply of watermelon. Yeah. So. Watermelon and right there, my two yeah. favourites. Um, what do you think, Caitlin? Pretty good. Corn beef. Corn beef. Chicken. Chicken. Yeah. Tomato and cucumber salad. Doesn't get any more Aussie than that, does it? This is a stinkly Aussie chip right there. Australian sausage sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it smells like. Somehow they've got it into English a paper bag. <laughs> English lamb and meat. <laughs> he just used to continuously beat to the rhythm of drum drums while you're watching a movie. Just sit there. That was all, you know, it was just... He nearly got thrown out the window. He nearly didn't make it to the news voice. He would continually just be banging on something, you know. Just if if he was awake, he was banging on something. That, that was that was Peter, you know. And um, you know, I remember even when he was at church, he'd be uh, even as a young kid, and uh, and you could always you could always see that that was the area it was going to take him, you know. In, in terms of the family, who was who was least likely to succeed, he was probably it. But um, you know, he's just. Put a lot of hard work over 20 years and made, carved out a, uh, an amazing career, and, um, and he, he deserves all, all the accolades he gets. This is Port Nalunga Primary School. This is where I went to primary school till I was, I guess, 10, 8 maybe. And my dad went here. My brother went here. My uncle went here, a lot of the furlers went here, just in that little classroom over there. And this tree, this big old gum tree, that was, I don't know how long that's been there, but probably my dad picked bark off of it. I jumped in it and we used to climb it all the time and that's the playground we used to play in, so quite a simple life really. That's the class that I was in and uh, I think I got my first fight here. And uh, we used to play cricket here, cricket and football, see that in two white posts, that's the football post used to kick the football between them posts to get a goal. Little sand pit over there we used to play in. And um, yeah, that's it. It was cool. As you see, it wasn't very big. So I don't know how many students, maybe just, I don't know. I had never counted. Mark was the guy that he used to do, he did my homework. You know, I mean, I'd get home from school and I just didn't do homework or anything, but Mark loved, he loved school, you know. He was the brainiac in the family. And, uh, and we went to this, this school, Bethesda Christian School, and he was like, he, we, I, you know, I, he started out here at the grade, and I was here because I was older than him. And he jumped to here, and then he jumped to there, and so I was kind of left here. But he, but just this year, and so he was kind of the ducks of the school, you know, the, the kingpin, and, you know, and uh, and the, the voted best to succeed or whatever. And then they, uh, what? <laughs> this year they asked me to come and speak at a school, and they kicked me out. You know? <laughs> it's true. I got, I got an email from the old, old schoolboy network, you know, and they said. We heard Peter Furler's in town. We'd really be honoured if he could come to Bethesda Christian College and <laughs> and and speak about the success of his life. And I, oh, and I was the ducks of the school. No one asked me to come. <laughs> Be 
look around here, you see a lot of the names on the graves of furlers because this town, Norlunga, was settled by uh, two furler families that came over in 1836, something like that. 1836, it was about a six month trip from London, England in an old boat. I don't know how many on board those boats, but there was probably two or three hundred on those boats. And, and they come out here, two brothers settled here in Norlunga. Did I tell you that I ran away in the hills out there? Only because I done it when I was 14 <laughs> years old. Yeah, we, we, got a runaway, we had a runaway streak in our family. <laughs> yeah. It was one thing. I guess they ran away from England, and when we got here, Dad used to run off and he used to go on these hills back here. He used to go and catch rabbits and, you know, and stuff. And then when I was 10 years old, down at the primary school that we just passed, me and uh, my best friend, who was a guy named Peter Teller, Aboriginal guy, uh, we decided we were going to run away. So it was uh, afternoon recess, about three in the afternoon, and we just disappeared. And we were just going to live off rabbits and fish and whatever. And and uh, about four hours later, Dad looked out the backyard and he saw these two clowns. Isn't that what happened? Exactly. He saw these exactly. two roaming down the hills. He, <laughs> yeah. So they decided it was time to come and get us. And yeah. so yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously I made it back. That's right. I think that uh, our our uh, lucky spot is this one over here where I just noticed on the grave it says that uh, I know in whom I have believed. I think we had a, a lot of our ancestors praying as we do for our family and family line. And I think that way back then, where there's no television, no broadband, I think they had time to pray. And I think some of our ancestors were really praying that their descendants and further on would really come to know and be able to say, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. I think it's great to see it on a graveyard anyway, stone. This, is, um, this house behind me on my right is the house that uh, from when I was about 10 years old uh, um, we moved here and uh, so as you can see down here is the surf club and uh, that's where I did a lot of the aquatics you know teaching people to swim and and then this is the beach that I spent a lot of time with you see the pier just here that I was talking about earlier and uh, so this area if you see how close I live to the beach I was just uh, grab my surfboard in the backyard and uh, run down uh, that was the main surf beach down there Southport my mum and dad used to, uh, in this, this used to be, it's a restaurant now, and when my parents had it, it was a restaurant, a different type of restaurant. It was uh, like a pancake house. So uh, I used to have to, you know, I was sort of a waiter, sort of slash dishwasher, mainly dishwashing. They didn't like, uh, we seemed to scare a lot of customers off when I was out there waiting. In the house, down below, there's a whole stack of rooms, and a lot of we'd have renters, so people were like, uh, the people that would live with us were people like Vietnam veterans and war veterans, World War One, World War Two veterans, and uh, and uh, so it was a strange time to live with all these different characters in the house. Like I remember, you know, one night our house was broken into, and, and our dog, we had a big Alsatian, big German Shepherd uh, type dog, and uh, and we hear it just going crazy, you know, and, and uh, there was there was a burglar had come in the house, and uh, and the dog had him pinned to the wall, and you know, bit all his arm up and uh, so there's always some action going on around here. Hello Miss Caitlin, how are you now? Miss you want to get a picture? Yeah. Say hi to the video, this is my nanny. How old are you now nanny? Oh, 93. Oh, young pup. <laughs> <laughs> There you are, Mum. <laughs> Pat That's built me my true. first go-kart. <laughs> remember that go-kart? I, I remember it well. I used to pedal that thing around like a maniac. Uh, you know. Now I still have a need for speed. <laughs> right. I love that. That's a beautiful colour, Daddy. That's yeah. really yeah. awesome. That's going to come out so good in the film. You know? We're going to make you a star. <laughs> you are going to be a star. <laughs> Everyone's going to be coming down to 23 Nashwalk Crescent. See ya. <laughs> We're going to get stalkers, <laughs> paparazzi, it's going to be awesome.